power. How rapidly can we move to 100% clean energy? Or to say it differently, how quickly can we stop burning fossil fuels? These are ambitious questions. Today, some people still do not see the point of renewable clean energy. Most people do not even know if it is possible to go 100% renewable and few people have even considered how quickly. As a renewable energy scientist and as a father, this topic is important to me. I have two young daughters. Like any parent, we want our children to grow up in a world where the climate is stable so that food can be grown reliably, where energy is produced without pollution and where it is plentiful to avoid energy conflict. I worry we are not changing from fossil fuels fast enough to avoid these dangers. Fifteen years ago, when I started to work on solar cells, the scarcity of photovoltaic panels seemed to me to be a technical problem. You know, like putting man on the moon. Obviously, the solar cells need to be improved or made cheaper. Or why else was no one using them? It did not seem like a social or political or economic issue such as poverty. Today, I want to take you on my journey as I try to help accelerate us to 100% clean energy. We can start by saying what we mean by clean or renewable energy sources. We mean biofuels, wind turbines and photovoltaics. They are clean because they convert the energy from the sun and the wind into electricity or fuel whilst producing fewer greenhouse gases than the burning of fossil fuels. But if the energy we use to make the wind turbines come from fossil fuels, will they actually be cleaner? Well, scientists have studied the greenhouse gas emissions for all the different clean technologies over their lifetime. They measure the mass of greenhouse gases emitted for every unit of energy made for each technology. And I have plotted this on the vertical axis. The energy unit, KWH, stands for kilowatt hours, which we find on our electricity bill and it is the one I will use throughout this talk. A high number on this graph means more harmful emissions have been generated for producing the same amount of electricity compared to a lower number. We can see that for each technology we have a range of values. For example, for photovoltaics this range comes about from the fact that there are different types of solar cells which require different amounts of energy and thus greenhouse gases to make them. Crucially, we can see that photovoltaics and wind turbines have significantly lower greenhouse gas emissions than fossil fuels. They are clearly cleaner. The next question to ask ourselves is do clean energy technologies really produce more energy than it takes to make them? Again, this is measurable and to show this we need to look at the ratio of electrical energy generated over the energy invested to make the device. If this ratio is greater than one, here given by the orange dashed line, we generated more energy than what it took to build the power plant. The higher the number, the better. You can see that all technologies are above one, so they all make more energy than was necessary to build them. Again, there are a range of values. For example, some places are windier than others, and a wind turbine would produce more energy in a windier place than a calmer one. So now that we have seen that photovoltaics, wind turbines and biofuels can generate more energy than that needed to produce them, we are ready to tackle the question of can we go to 100% clean energy? When I started my photovoltaic career, I thought that I could use my scientific skills to make solar cells from cheap, simple salt solutions in beakers rather than the more traditional heavy vacuum equipment, thus making them cheaper. I was awarded several grants to do so and I could get PhD students to come and research in my lab. But a few years later, I discovered that cost might not be the main problem after all. And I will explain why, as this will help us understand what determines if and when we go 100% renewable. We can think about energy as a balance problem. On the left, we have our energy consumption, where the blue box represents the amount of energy we need to live our lives. On the right, the pink box represents the energy supply or the amount of clean energy that we can generate. This supply should be at least the same, if not bigger, than what we need or else we won't be able to heat our houses in winter. So, now let's look at how much clean energy we can generate here in Luxembourg. We will use the example of photovoltaic devices as I know these best. 
the total energy we can generate is equal to the intensity of the sunlight multiplied by how efficiently our photovoltaic panels can convert the sun's energy into electrical energy multiplied by the number of hours of sunshine multiplied by the area on which we can put the panels, which can be the whole of Luxembourg if we need. The product of these four things gives us our total energy. And we can do the same for wind and biofuels. So how much energy could we generate in Luxembourg? Well, I have calculated the amount of electricity that can be generated from one meter square in Luxembourg every year. This is two kilowatt hours for biomass, 22 for wind turbines, and 180 for solar panels. So are these numbers fixed, or can we improve them? One easy thing to do is to combine wind turbines and photovoltaics on the same land. For photovoltaics themselves, we can neither change the hours of sunshine nor the size of Luxembourg. So if we want to increase the amount of clean energy that we make, we need either to improve their efficiency in converting light to electricity, or put photovoltaic panels on surfaces we would not normally use. And that is why I changed the focus of my research from low-cost photovoltaics to high efficiency, and to putting solar cells on unused vertical surfaces, such as the on the sides of buildings. But what about the cost? Aren't clean energy technologies more expensive? Calculations from Germany show the total cost of electricity per kilowatt hour generated for all the technologies. We can see that photovoltaics and wind are the same cost or even slightly cheaper than fossil fuels. That's great. So financially speaking, there is no reason to stay with fossil fuels. Now that we have understood the energy generation side of our balance, let us look at our energy need. When René Descartes started his philosophy, he started with the axiom, I think, therefore I am. When I started to think about our energy need, I started with the axiom, I am, therefore I consume. To illustrate this, I will add up all my personal energy costs for you. I have the heating of my house, the electricity at home and work, being a research scientist with large equipment is very energetically expensive. My daily commute, my business and personal flights abroad. These are all my direct energy costs, which would not exist if I did not exist. On top of this, I added my embedded energy costs, such as the energy needed to grow and transport my food, the energy needed to make my car, my computer, and my clothes. I got to a total of 120 kilowatt hours per day. Is that a lot or not? Well, we can compare with people from different regions. In fact, the average person in Luxembourg uses 204 kilowatt hours, so slightly more than me. Interestingly, an average European uses 92 kilowatt hours, and the average citizen of the world uses just 61. That means I use twice as much energy as an average person of the world. So how do we calculate the energy consumption of Luxembourg every year? Well, we can take the average daily consumption of a person in the country, multiply by the days in the year, and multiply by the population. The product of these three things is our annual energy need. Now that we have considered our energy need, we are ready to see if Luxembourg can go 100% renewable by comparing our consumption to what we can generate. Let's take the extreme case of covering every single square meter of Luxembourg with clean energy technologies. Remember, our ability to generate must be larger than our need, or we will never go 100% renewable. Wow! If we cover the whole of Luxembourg with photovoltaics and wind turbines, we would generate 11 times more energy than we would consume. So it is possible to go 100% renewable. So how much land area do we need to cover to actually just match our consumption? Let's take a look. Here is a map of Luxembourg. And to give you a sense of scale, I'm showing all the buildings visualized as white dots. They take 2% of the land surface. Next, I will show you a map with the surface area of photovoltaic panels and wind turbines needed in order to go fully renewable whilst using the average Luxembourgish consumption of 204 kilowatt hours per day per person. You can see the area is quite big. 
we would need to cover 9% of Luxembourg's surface. But what would happen if all the people in Luxembourg only consumed energy like Europeans, meaning 92 kilowatt hours per day per person? Since the energy demand is now half of the Luxembourgish demand in this scenario, the surface area we would require would just be half, just 4%. That seems very achievable. So we have seen that the amount of energy that we need to live our lives depends on our personal consumption and that here in Luxembourg we have enough wind and sunshine to go 100% renewable, especially if we lower our consumption. Now we can answer the question, how rapidly can we go 100% renewable? For this, we will need one last graph, and here it is. On the bottom, I put time in years, and on the vertical axis, I put energy per year. This will be used for both our consumption and our clean energy generation. Let's start with our generation. In 2020, the Luxembourg government published an ambitious plan for more than doubling renewable energy installation by 2040. Currently, we can generate 3 billion kilowatt hours per year, and the plan is to reach 7 billion by 2040, as shown by the pink circles. Now, let's assume that we keep installing renewables at the same rate after 2040. This is shown by the pink dashed line. Let me just change the scale on the vertical axis a bit to show you better how this looks. It's still the same data. When this pink dashed line crosses our consumption line, we will be in renewable energy balance, meaning we will generate as much energy as we need. Let me just draw on the current Luxembourgish consumption. Ah, um, <clears throat> Actually, the renewable energy we can generate only reaches half of what we need by the year 2100. Is this really the future that we would like to leave for our children? What can we do? Well, we can try to double the amount of renewable energy per year, as shown by the second dashed pink line above the first one. This can be done by doubling the rate of new installations. Even doing this, we would only go 100% renewable after the year 2100, which is long after I will be dead. There is one other option. We here in Luxembourg could choose to live like Europeans, with lower energy consumption which would look like this blue lower line with the European flag. Now look, with double the installation rate and only using European amounts of energy, we could go 100% renewable by 2050, which is hopefully within my lifetime and is exactly what we need to do. So what does this all mean? We have seen that the speed in which we can go 100% renewable depends on our consumption and on the rate of installation and energy converting efficiency of new clean energy sources. Therefore, this is still a scientific problem, but greater still, this is a social, political and economic challenge. It is a social challenge because our consumption is individual. I am, therefore I consume. Knowing this, what did I do? Well, I only used the bike and train to get to work. My wife and I replaced our 13-year-old combustion car with an electric one, which is charged by our newly installed photovoltaic panels. We have added insulation materials and better windows to our house. All these individual actions lower our consumption. Probably you can think of many more. Only if the majority of us take action will it make a real difference. Unfortunately, not all of us can afford to take all of these actions, but I am sure we can all make some changes to lower our consumption. It is a political challenge because this is what affects the rate of large-scale clean energy installation. Only governments can mandate the use of land, ensure energy equality for all, and provide critical coordination. We need to vote for the government which promises the most renewable energy. It's an economic challenge because money must be found to make this profound change in our energy system from fossil fuel to clean technology based. One way to push this is to join a public cooperative which crowdsources funding to buy large-scale photovoltaic installations. It is also a business opportunity. The knowledge gained from an early transition from fossil fuels to clean energy can be commoditized. 
Finally, I am asked sometimes, why bother? Let's just buy clean energy from somewhere else. My answer is this. We are morally responsible. If Luxembourg, one of the richest countries in the world, cannot go 100% renewable, which other country will? We must show leadership. National pride pushed the Americans and the Soviets to try to put man on the moon. We must show pride to try to go 100% renewable as quickly as possible.